Okay, this is uh, Joe again with Share My Coach. I'm glad to be back uh, talking about this form right here. It's called For Your Safety. This is one of the sheets that you're going to have to fill out and uh, sign before you take off in your motorhome today. And on this particular form, you're gonna see it on screen as we, uh, as we pull up uh, a few of the highlighted areas. But I wanna go over this quickly and just talk about um, you know, seat belts. Number one talks about seat belts uh, in these motorhomes. In California, you are supposed to be in a seat belt. Kids are supposed to be in a seat belt and adults are supposed to be in a seat belt. These are considered Class C licenses. And so any place that you can drive a regular car, you can drive a motorhome. And, and so um, you know, you're supposed to be in seat belts. Um, beds under number two talks about really are not designed for travel. I know that there's bunk beds and there's uh, beds in the rear on these and a lot of times people want to crawl up in those and sleep as you're driving. Um, certainly you can do as you want but uh, technically you are not supposed to be in those when you're traveling. Uh, number three right here talks about when you pull into a gas station. I always say I don't want to see this motorhome on the six o'clock news so please when you pull into a gas station and you put fuel in these motorhomes you want to make sure that the refrigerator is turned off just walk over to the refrigerator right up on the on the panel there's an on off button you want to turn that off because there's refrigerators these are propane refrigerators and same thing with the water heater and same thing with the furnace those run propane and they're flames about this big and some of them are very close to the fuel pumps and so what you want to do is make sure that that's all turned off and so maybe have somebody in your group be the responsible person to go ahead and uh, go around and turn them off and then when you pull back out of the gas station turn them back on what i need you to do on the form that you have in your hand right now is under number three i want you to actually initial that that you understand why we're doing that number four talks about loose objects anything in these motorhomes that are left on the countertops um, water bottles, uh, um, food items, stuff like that. And when you're driving, those things will become a projectile. You're driving 65 miles an hour, you hit your brakes, and not only the people in the coaches, but everything on the counters are gonna go flying off. So stow everything in these motorhomes and, and keep things out of the walkways in case you have to exit a motorhome rather quick. Number five talks about using a lookout. You know, when, you're, when you pull away from, even if they have a backup camera, when you're pulling away from something or you're backing in, um, I don't trust the cameras all the time. Now, the cameras are very good, the backup cameras are good, the mirrors are very good, but it's good to have somebody get out of the motorhome and assist you. Now, don't get in an argument with them, <laughs> you know, but uh, um, if they tell you that you're gonna hit something, probably you wanna heed that warning. Um, and so, uh, you know, but be aware of your surroundings and also look up because these motorhomes are 12 foot, 12 foot six tall. And so when you're pulling into campsites, those trees are sometimes haven't been trimmed. And, and even in your own neighborhood, when you pull into your, your house, that's where a lot of damage happens. As those trees right at your own home, you didn't even know they existed because most cars are about six foot tall. These motorhomes are 12 foot six to the top of the air conditioners. <clears throat> so be aware of the height. Under number six, it talks about the total height of the motorhome. And so on that one right there, I want you to actually write down 12 foot six. That's gonna be your height um, that you need to be minimum. So when you pull into a gas station, make sure that you're looking at the little, um, uh, the footage, they'll have them usually labeled when you pull in. Uh, be aware of that. There's no place on the highways that you're gonna have to worry about 12 foot six, but uh, trees, and uh, private property, that can be an issue. So write that down so you understand it. Number seven talks about keeping the storage bays locked. When you're traveling, some of these storage bays will pop open. And so what you wanna do is make sure that they get a good lock on them because they're spring loaded. Um, make sure that everything gets locked up. Number eight talks about exhaust ports. Um, the water heater, uh, when it's on, it's it has exhaust and that exhaust is hot. Furnaces, exhaust is hot, and so it says hot on those, so make sure that the kids are aware of those and uh, they don't play around in that. Uh, number nine talks about emergency windows. Inside the motorhome, for emergency windows that open fully, they're marked with red latches. And so when you, um, when you have to get somebody out of a motorhome, <laughs> or if you want to throw one of the kids out, <laughs> not just kidding, you know, open that, open the red latch and that one will open all the way up and those are the, those are the emergency windows. Showers, don't let anybody be taking a shower when you're driving. Um, they're slippery, obviously. Uh, rooftops, number 11, don't go on the roof. That's not an observation deck. I know sometimes at sporting events you want to get up on the roof. Don't do that because you're going to damage the roof. 
Weight limits on those roofs for a technician is 150 pounds. That's it, that's all you can put on those roofs. And sometimes you'll see six, seven, eight, ten people on those and you wonder why there's damage. Well, it breaks the seals around those vents, so don't go up there. Even if they have a ladder, that's not for observation, it's for emergency work and to do repairs. Number 12, never attempt to change a tire on your own. If you're on the road and you have a flat tire, what we want you to do is to first get into a safe place. So pull off the highway, slowly drive off, get to where you're safe, and then call our company. We've left you a couple of numbers. We have three numbers. We have a daytime number, and then we have two tech numbers. And so if you call us, we're gonna find somebody to come in to assist you to get a tire change. They do not have jacks in these motorhomes because of the size. Now, the, the tires have been, the tire pressure has been checked before you left. That was in your checkoff. So whether or not the tire cost is yours or the tire cost is ours is gonna depend on what happened with the tire. Be careful on the highways. When you hit objects out there and it loses the air, if you hit something on the highway, don't keep driving. Get pulled over and check for damage. Um, these are big vehicles and you lose a tire, it can be, it can be very dangerous. So, but in any case, and in all cases, call us, we will send some help for you. Uh, number 13 talks about the steps. The steps, every time the step goes in and out, um, that's because the door opened and closed. There is a button inside the motorhome right when you walk in the step area that you can shut the steps off. So when you're at a campsite, you don't have to have that step open and close every time somebody comes in and out the motorhome. What you can do is you can shut the step off. Now, these are tied to the motorhome itself, so when you start the ignition, the step will come in. Um, now, I do want you to listen for the step and you know, uh, don't automatically assume it comes in every time, but they do 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. So it talks about uh, being able to shut that step off. So it, uh, cause sometimes the kids will go running out of the motorhome real fast and the step doesn't have a chance to get all the way out and they'll stumble out the, out, the, out the coach. So you can leave it all the way open if you want, or you can have it go in and out every time you open and close the door. Uh, under number 14, it talks about uh, awnings. Now, you're going to watch in the orientation, there's three different types of awnings. There is a 110 electrical awnings, there's a 12 volt electrical awnings, and those are the automatic ones, and then there's a manual awning. In all cases, when you're at a campsite, don't leave the awning open overnight. Those become big wind sails. I call them a $2,500 wind sails because if the wind picks it up and pulls it off the motorhome, they're about $2,500. And so, um, so, you know, if the rule of thumb is, is when you're outside the motorhome using the awning, the awning's out. When you're inside, bring the awning back in. So don't leave them out overnight, okay? Um, and pay special attention on the manual awnings because there are a few pinch points on those because you're manually opening them. They're not difficult, and we'll show you how to do that when you're watching the awning orientation. Um, it talks about you know high wind situations. These are wide, big vehicles, and so when you're in the highways and the wind is really blowing, slow down a little bit. You'll see those things kind of moving around a little bit going down the highway. Just slow down. Uh, it talks about number 16, talking about the generators. You know, gasoline generators, and, and if your motorhome is a gas motorhome, if you put gas in the engine, it's running off the same fuel tank as the generator does. And so the generators, um, when you get into high altitudes, if you're going to Yosemite, you're going up in the mountains, you're over 5,000 foot elevation, there is a setting on the generator for high altitude. That otherwise, if you don't make that setting, that you can't have that setting at 5,000 if you're at sea level, because then it won't run either. So there is a setting and under the generators, you're gonna watch that and it shows you how to do that. Along with the breakers, um, if the generator is running and you have no power coming into the motorhome, there's a reason for that. So watch the video on that and it's gonna explain that. Um, we're going, and by the way, on the generator, if you get to less than a quarter tank of fuel, What's gonna happen is that the generator's not gonna run because it doesn't wanna take all the fuel out of the main tank because then you won't be able to drive the motor home uh, because it would be empty. So when you get to a quarter tank, you need to make sure that uh, you understand that the generator's not gonna run. Um, number 16, or number 17, it talks about toll roads. Now, toll roads, if you're, you can drive these motorhomes in, in the toll roads and you can, and, and you need to call the toll road company though, if you have a transponder and you think that that transponder is going to, um, you know, keep you from having to pay the toll, it's not because you have, as of uh, 2014, we've been instructed that toll road um, transponders only work with the vehicles that have been registered to that transponder. 
So make sure that you call, otherwise the owner is gonna get a, a ticket, uh, usually 30 days after you come back from your trip, and then we have to contact you, and then you have to contact the toll roads company. So just call the toll road company before you leave and let them know and register that vehicle to it. And then when you get back, call them again and take it off. Or when you go through the tolls, just pay the cash, and that way you don't have to do either. Um, failure to follow some of these suggestions can obviously be dangerous. So please follow these instructions. I want you to watch the orientation videos. Um, the orientation videos covers everything that we just talked about in all detail. And so what I'm going to have you do right now is I need you to sign this down here where it says the renter and then your representative is going to sign it down here too and we're going to keep it in the file so we have uh, confirmation that you've been um, instructed on some of the proper use of the motorhome. I want to thank you and we'll look forward to seeing you guys when you get back.